Now, the Department of Labor and Employment has appealed to employers who are using migrants as cheap labor to stop the practice. The department uh, and their comments come amid growing concerns over violent attacks and the burning of trucks in the freight uh, sector. An interministerial committee has now been set up to investigate the attacks that have found uh, that companies could in fact be favoring cheaper migrant drivers over local workers and the fight for ownership and lucrative routes is at the heart of the unrest. These are details that are being unveiled uh, over the past few days. Director General of the Employment and Labor Department is uh, Tobile Lamati, and he joins us now to speak about the tensions in the industry and how they're being addressed. Uh, Mr. Malati, thanks very much for your time. Welcome to the AM Report. Let's speak first about this interministerial committee. Take us through the immediate objectives of this committee. The, the interministerial committee was set up uh, by the president, not only as a response to the, what was happening in the, in, in the road freight uh, industry, but also to look at broadly at the issues of uh, labor migration um, and also the issues of uh, having the issues of uh, making sure that the country has an employment, an employment policy. Of course, you know that uh, people have been talking about the fact that uh, you have foreigners that have taken that are taking over uh, jobs for the South Africans, and there seems to be preference by the employers um, of foreigners of foreign nationals over South Africans, and that's largely because we do not have any regulation that uh, that seems to regulate the employment of foreign nationals um, in the country. So the, the purpose of, the, of, the, of setting up this interministerial committee is to look at what is it that, that can be done within the confines of our own constitution. You know, South Africa is a constitutional state, but also um, within the international, um, inter, international obligations that South Africa has um, as, as a country and how also looking at our, the trading relationship that we have with the um, other uh, Saudi countries and other African countries. Yeah, so I, I presume then, given your initial statements, that you would agree that at the heart of the contention in the road freight uh, sector, uh, you know, the attacks we've seen over the past few days is in fact issues around policy related to migration. Look, when, when this thing started, um, we thought that that was a driving uh, uh, motive behind the, the attacks. But uh, in the last few uh, weeks and months, we've seen that uh, the, the attacks um, are conducted indiscriminately, meaning that uh, they don't look at whether you're a South African driver or not, they just <clears throat> attack the trucks, which um, you know, gives us a sense that there are other motives behind employment-related uh, matters. I just want to take you back. Before, before lockdown, we had a um, joint operations that we conducted with both the, the police uh, and, and the home affairs. And we were mending roadblocks. And we could pick up uh, you know, drivers that were not, uh, did not have legal documents. And now I want to stress that uh, we're talking about drivers or people that are in the country, illegally those that are undocumented, because those that are documented, they have a, you know, a, a right to be in the country and they, they also have a right uh, to find employment yes. um, where, where they are successful. So those are the areas that we want to focus on. So this thing seems to have taken a different uh, turn now. But nevertheless, from a policy point of view, we are steaming ahead and uh, uh, the interministerial committee will be presenting a, a, their report to cabinet um, uh, next week. Um, and then we will take it from there. Right. You know, and it's a difficult situation to try and navigate because even if there are nefarious activities taking place, people can always hide them behind a lack of policy direction in regulating things like migration. In fact, my understanding is that last year there was an undertaking to actually put together a draft national labor migration policy. This draft policy was meant to be put together in March this year, and here we are still waiting. Now, that's why I'm saying um, we, we're steaming ahead. Um, we will be presenting something to, to, the, to the cabinet. Um, 
along, along those uh, along those lines. Look, um, this is a very complicated... Sorry to, uh, sorry to interrupt you there, uh, Tobila. What are some of the reasons that this draft regulation wasn't ready by March, despite the undertaking made last year already, that it would be ready by then? Look, there's a, there's a lot of work that had to go into, into this exercise. Um, remember that um, we, especially South Africa, we need to be very cautious um, you know, because whatever policy that we come up with, it has to pass a constitutional master. Um, and, and, and the legal people that we're working with and that we continue to work with, um, you know, have warned us that if we arbitrarily come up with this policy that will seem to be discriminating against uh, foreign nationals, um, we may have an egg on our, on our, on our face as, the, as, a, as, a, as government, not only as a Department of Employment and Labor, but as government. Remember, the, we have made it, long, we have made it uh, known a long time ago as a country that um, there's a role that must be played by foreign nationals in the development of the economy um, of the country. So we have a right, uh, our companies have a right to import skills in areas where they don't have uh, skills. So we have to navigate those uh, things, looking at uh, people that are in the country, the asylum seekers versus the um, those that are undocumented. And the real problem is those that are undocumented um, because the asylum seekers, we, we, Home Affairs has a number of people that are in the country uh, that are seeking asylum. Um, and you know that previously there have been court cases where um, our courts have indicated that those people that are um, in the country and they have papers, they have a right um, to work. But you also know that there's a special dispensation that has been given to, um, you know, Zimbabwe, Lesotho. Um, <clears throat> so that also creates some bit of a, of a challenge for us. But of course, you know, um, if we'd come up with a policy and still have borders that are for us, yeah. um, that's another problem. And that's why Home Affairs is working uh, tirelessly to make sure that they deal with the issues, the issue of uh, uh, of for us, for us. All right. Toby, we're going to have to leave it there. Sadly, that's the time we have for this part of our exchange. It, it does certainly feel like it's a multiplicity of issues to try to get to the bottom of quelling some of the tensions we're seeing spilling out, not only in this industry, I think it's important to stress, but plenty others across South Africa. But thanks very much for your time. Appreciate your weighing in at this juncture. Uh, Toby Lemalaiti is the Director General of the Employment and Labor Department. Appreciate your time indeed.